Hey there, all you wonderfully miserable tortured artists. P.T. Pop here with all four lobes of my brain securely bound behind my back. And welcome to another episode of my gnome garden. I'm in my backyard here in cold and overcast Cleveland, Ohio. Today is June 7th. And for some reason, the temperature on this June day has dropped to about 60 degrees. It's overcast and it's cold but the birds are chirping. The skies, well, they used to be blue, and I'm a happy pup. But today I wanted to talk about making money as an artist. And I was thinking about this yesterday, and I thought, why do each of us as artists think we're entitled to make a living at art? And I went through this too. Uh, many years ago, I started performing my music, my original songs in coffee shops. And people like my music and people would hire me in coffee shops and bars and taverns and places around Phoenix and, and Cleveland, the two cities I've lived in. And I made some extra cash in it, but people weren't buying my CDs. I, I made a CD in 1999 called Child's Play and people weren't buying my CD. And I thought, well, if you like my music, you'll buy my CD. What's wrong with you people that you won't buy my CD? What's wrong with everybody? They won't buy my music. They'll come up to me and say, I love your original stuff. And I say, here's my CD for $10. They're like, well, I don't know, man. I, I, I got to go and I got to go put the cats to bed, you know. And I think a lot of us have this idea that we're meant to make money. People should feel that they have to give us their hard-earned money. They should buy our products. And it just doesn't work that way. And there's, there's no law or anything written in, in the laws that says, you're an artist, therefore you shall make money at this. Unfortunately, there's not. And there's a variety of things that keep that from happening. Number one, people's taste. The general public has their, their attitudes about money and they have their attitudes about artists. They have the attitude of what they're gonna spend their money on. And most people are not gonna fork over dough for a CD, well, they don't even really sell CDs anymore, but they're not going to fork over their hard-earned cash for your artwork unless they're really moved by it, you know? They're not really going to want to do that. You know, they're not going to buy a painting unless they can see it in their house or it's something that really, so, so to speak, speaks to them on a personal level. But I think a lot of us think we were expected to make money, we're entitled to make money, we should be making money, we've got to make money make money, make, make, make money. We get offended, we get upset, we get depressed. And I say we because I think I'm speaking from a personal level. This is what I went through. And I sell some of my art. I sell a lot of my photography and I sell, you know, my music. I sell books, but all of that combined doesn't add up to enough to do much of anything other than put gas in the car. Which, you know, I'm grateful for that. But I started thinking about this and each of us think, well, we must not be successful because we're not making money at this. We must not be successful because people aren't buying our products. We're not buying a lot of it. And I think in our society, everybody thinks they've got to be a rock star to be, to be successful. Each of us have to be like this world famous person whose their name is a household name. Everybody knows who they are, and that's not true. I mean, I can think of just off the top of my head a variety of people I know who are brilliant artists, musicians, photographers, painters, illustrators, that nobody even knows they exist. And you know, there's a lot of people far more talented than me in history that had very hard times making money. I mean, we all know about Van Gogh. I think Gauguin, Cezanne, a variety of those people had extremely hard times being taken seriously in the art community and by society for their artwork. And they've made very little, if any, money at it. Now their paintings are going for hundreds of millions of dollars, which is a whole nother story. And there's a whole history behind why their paintings are selling for so much. There's a full structure behind that that is is not what you think it is 
And in many cases, it has nothing to do with the piece of work. It has more to do with who owned the piece of work previously. So, for instance, if a piece of work was owned by John D. Rockefeller, and just because it was owned by John Rockefeller and it was part of his estate, somebody will buy it and they'll auction it off and the bids go up. It'll start off at a million. By the time they, they sold it, it went for 10 million. And throughout history, it gets passed down to millionaires and, and big names and people, either in the, the wealthiest of communities or in the art community. But I digress. Um, there's nothing that guarantees or says that we're supposed to make money in what we do. I think even if you're good at what you do and, and you know you're good, that doesn't mean people are going to want to buy it. This is where you've got to learn to become a business person. Unfortunately, being an artist doesn't mean you're free from the burden of marketing and advertising and schmoozing with people and rubbing elbows. Most of us artists, myself included, I, I'm more outgoing now than I'm older, but when I was younger, I didn't want to talk to anyone. I was painfully shy, withdrawn, very uh, to myself. I didn't want to talk to anyone. And I thought if I could go into the arts, that I could avoid people and I could just do my artwork and people would buy it. But I found that that's not true, especially now. The chances of you making a living in art now are infinitesimally small. Why? Because with the invention of the internet and the invention of artificial intelligence, and Photoshop and InDesign, the Illustrator and digital cameras, and iPhones, now everybody and their mother is a photographer or a video maker or an illustrator or a, whatever you want to call it, an animator. And now every, your, your competition has increased exponentially. So, so you might be a trained, skilled artist that knows about color theory and composition and all those things, but now you're dealing with a guy down the street who has an iPhone who's making a film and he thinks he's a movie maker now, even though he knows nothing about editing and knows nothing about production quality and knows nothing about angles or lighting or, you know, directing a film. He might make something, yeah. he may have stumbled upon something that looks interesting and the general public sees it on YouTube and he gets a million downloads. That doesn't make him a, a legitimate filmmaker. Yes, he's made a film and he's a filmmaker, but you're competing against every schmuck in the world now and the general public has no clue. The unskilled, untrained general public who's never taken an art class in their lives, who's working in a shop you know, seven to four or whatever, or working in an office from eight to five. He doesn't know Van Gogh from Betty Crocker. Is going to go, wow, that's a great movie, dude. You made that with your iPhone. Oh my God, I've got to show this to my kids. Oh my God, where can I buy a copy of that, you know? So you're competing against, I don't know if there is something below an amateur, but, but you're competing with people who just stumble upon stuff. They have dumb luck and they, they, they happen to make something that's interesting. It doesn't make them skilled. It doesn't make them talented. It doesn't make them an artist. But you, the skilled, trained artist, are up against that. And today, it's almost impossible to get any knowledge because we're all buried at the bottom of an ocean of people just like that who have an iPhone or have a, a laptop and they've gone out and bought Photoshop and they half-ass it. You know, and they're just putting shit out there. And it's, it's even harder now to make money. So what I have found for myself is to just make art for art's sake, to be cliche. I just make it because I enjoy it. I'm doing a painting right now. I have no preconceived notion that anyone's going to like it. I don't know if anyone's going to buy it. I don't even know if I'd want to sell it. I'm having a blast just creating this painting of this uh, model I met named Jilly. And she, she just took this picture of herself sitting at a piano. And it's just a phenomenal photograph that she took by herself with her Nikon. I'm having a blast painting and I'm having fun. And it's one of the best things I've ever done. Does it make it a great painting? To me, it's a great painting. 
but compared to the masters of the Renaissance, the Da Vinci, no, it's probably garbage. You know, if you want to compare it uh, to, to the greats. But to me, it's great. To me, it's fun. And I feel fulfilled and I feel happy inside that I'm able to make it. I feel great that I, I have the ability to sit down and do it and that I have the time and the luxury of doing it. And I think, you know, I can't tell you how you're going to make money. I, I know how it's supposed to be done. I've done all the things they've told me to do. I, I followed all the videos. This is what you got to do to become an artist there, little Peter. You got to come up with a business plan. You got to come up with a budget. And you got to come up with advertising. You got to get on this website, that website. But the problem is, is that everybody else is doing that. I mean, the competition for artists now is so huge. Now you've got to come up with the most eccentric, clever, weird, far out things to catch anybody's eye because everybody's done everything. You know, now now to show a nude isn't enough. Now you got to show a nude who's an amputee, who whose left nipple is pierced, and uh, she's got a knife in her head. You know, and that's art because that's what people. You know, it's gotten so saturated with cleverness that how could you how do you outdo the last clever artist? So, I would suggest just enjoy what you're doing, and not worry about making money at it. If you're trying to make a living and you've got a family to support and put a roof over your head and put food on the table, art is not the way to do it. Sure, there are some people that do make a living at this and there's some people that have found a way to do it. And there's not a lot of them. There's not a lot of people that are paying for the health insurance, the car insurance, the health insurance, the mortgage, electrical water and gas bill. And gas in the car, you know, and buying a car. I mean, you, you've got to have a consistent income each month of probably at least four grand these days just to make ends meet. Do you know how many pieces of artwork you'd have to sell to bring in four grand a month? You've got to think about this from a, from a literal and a realistic perspective. You've really got to be moving art. Well, how are you going to move art? How are you going to make a living? You've got to constantly be working at it. You got to constantly be out there marketing yourself and promoting yourself. And if you happen to get lucky and something starts to sell and it starts to take off like hotcakes, there's something called diminishing returns. After a while, people are going to get bored with that. So let's say you make gnomes and people just love your gnomes. Well, maybe maybe you maybe you only make gnomes with red hats and people get tired of the red hats and they stop buying and you're trying to figure out why aren't they buying my gnomes anymore i spent years studying gnomes in college with red hats and you finally find out that as your sales drop off that people don't like the red hats and they don't like little little daisies on your gnomes they, they want uh, they want gnomes that look like you know bikers so you gotta start making gnomes look like bikers, and all people get, and then that you know, people get bored. So how are you going to be able to move enough merchandise to keep a roof over your head? And if you have kids, how are you going to pay for the kids? I, it, the point is, is that you'd almost have to be, and I always refer to the old-fashioned the Beatles. You'd have to become the Beatles of art of your particular niche in art to make a living in. And do you have any idea how much work you're going to have to put into that to become the Beatles of gnomes or the Beatles of oil paints, the Beatles of sculpture? Do you have any idea how many sculptures you'd have to sell of gnomes to make a living? I mean, just to say, I want to make art and I want to make a living at it. You can't just hope it happens. You have to have either a whole lot of extra time in your hands to do all the marketing and the, and the you know the legwork to get it done or you have to have enough cash or friends that want to help you market yourself it's not easy so my suggestion is, is to just enjoy the creative process keep making artwork keep putting it out there but i wouldn't put any bets on making a living at it on a consistent basis you're going to see ups, big ups, and you'll see big downs. Like I sell foot photography, but the best time I ever had selling photography was going to uh, art festivals. And I would, but, but the art festivals are a lot of work. I mean, 
one art festival I sold like fourteen hundred dollars worth of prints, just photographed prints, canvases, little prints. That was just one show in one summer. But that that summer, that for that one particular art festival, it was three days in the blazing hot sun and humidity here in Cleveland. And we had to load the car. We had to drive 25 miles to get there. We had to stand there. You know, it, it was, and you have to deal with a lot of people that walk into your booth and you have no intentions of buying anything. They're just there because it's something to do on a sunny weekend. And when it's all said and done, you've, you've easily put in probably in three days, probably a good 30 to 40 hours of work in three days between travel, standing there, selling, putting up the tent, taking down the tent. So there's, there's gives and takes to the whole thing. So number one, if you want to make money at this, you have to have a plan. You do. You have to have some type of way to get yourself out there and to market yourself. Number two, don't bank on making a living being an artist because the arts are a weird, finicky thing in this culture where people don't appreciate and they don't understand them. Number three, there's nothing said that you're supposed to make money at this. There's no there's no guarantee. Just because your favorite band or your favorite artist or somebody made money at this doesn't mean you're meant to. Any more than somebody that's good at basketball is meant to be in the pros. You know, so I would suggest, and what I've decided to do is just enjoy what I do. Enjoy making these videos. Enjoy talking to my nose. Being with my nose. Being one with my nose. And just enjoy the creative process. And if somebody buys something, that's kind of like icing on the cake where it's just, it's just, it's an added treat. Um, I haven't given up, but I still try to market myself. But, you know, we're not entitled to any of this. I mean, the arts or a strange, they're a beautiful thing, but they're a strange thing if you don't try to make money in it. So, take it or leave it. I'm PT Pop. I've got to name these guys. I, I don't have names for them. <laughs> How about Sven for him? Sven, I don't know. Sven, George, and... I don't know. See you later. Peace and love.